Hello everyone, I, I hope you are all back for the second segment of our remote training. My name is uh, Stelios Pesmatoglu. I'm a program officer at the IKEO Secretariat um, and one of my key responsibilities is uh, the Corsia Central Registry. In this uh, second part of uh, today's remote training, uh, what I'm going to talk about is how to report CO2 emissions using the CCR. Following up from the presentation that uh, we had earlier from uh, Ji Yong, um, let me see if I can get my screen to work. Okay. What we heard earlier from uh, Ji Yong is that by 31st of August 2020, states are required to submit their CO2 emissions for the year 2019 to ICAO. Later this year, by 30th of November 2020, there, there is, um, there is um, um, the requirement for more information to provide it to ICAO. And this relates to the list of airplane operators attributed to the state for the year 2021, and also the list of verification bodies accredited in the state. Now, the date here is 2021 because the actual verification will happen in 2021, in the first few months of 2021. But the data to be verified, of course, is going to be from uh, the year 2020. We are not going to discuss how you report information on airplane operators and verification bodies in this training, but we're going to focus on the CO2 emissions data uh, for 2019. The reason for that is that we have very limited time, of course, uh, for this online uh, remote training. Uh, plus, there will be another opportunity during the um, in-person seminars so we're going to have later this year to give you more information on how to submit information on aeroplane operators and verification uh, bodies. I will start off um, from uh, where Ji Yung ended her presentation on uh, how data flows between different stakeholders and i will again i will walk you through again one more time uh, through this process because it's extremely important for you uh, to have a good understanding of how this works in the context of the, of the ccr but before i start i would like to point out that all the states will have a corsia focal point but not all of them will have state users. If the experience we have so far with the online spreadsheet is anything to go by, it seems that um, a big number of states have very limited resources to devote to Corsia and they have very limited personnel to work on, on Corsia. So in a lot of states, we see that there is a Corsia focal point, one person yeah, nominated as a Corsia focal point and um, this situation is likely to uh, continue to be in the future. So what you see over here is not a requirement to have a state user, but it is an option for Corsia Focal Points where there is this luxury to have more than one person to work on Corsia, uh, to have additional personnel helping with inserting information in the CCR. In any case, we are demonstrating this uh, process both we have the assumption that it's going to be both a Corsia focal point and a state user. But again, keep in mind that there is no requirement for a state user. It is very possible that one person can do everything, a lot of work, but it is a possibility. In any case, having said this, uh, everything starts, as uh, JU mentioned, by the creation of a year record. And of course, once the year record is created, then its default status is in progress. And this means, in return, that both the Corsia focal point and the state user can add, edit, delete information that is required in this specific year record. Now, once this part of the work is uh, completed, then a state user can change the status of the year record to complete. And this means that there would be uh, the opportunity, it would give an opportunity to the Corsia focal point to review the information and the data and also make additional changes as needed. There will be an automatic email notification to the Corsia focal point that the status of the year record has changed and now it is up to the Corsia focal point to review the information. 
Now, once this is done, uh, the Corsia focal point will decide whether the state user needs to add more information or edit information. And if this is indeed the case, then uh, the Corsia focal point will change the status again to in progress to give the opportunity to the state user to do any additional changes. If, however, there is no need for any revisions, then the information can be submitted to ICAO by changing the status of the year record to ready. Again, an automatic email notification will be sent to the ICAO super user to check for format correctness. Uh, one thing that I would like to point out that um, there is no mandate for the Secretariat to perform any validation of um, information. So we are not going to be checking the actual uh, you know, correctness of the information, but more like whether the information has been submitted in the, in the correct format. Um, I will also show you later when we go into the CCR itself, the, uh, the CCR has inbuilt uh, business rules that actually check information. So for example, um, you know, for CO2 emissions, and you're gonna see this uh, when I demonstrate it in, uh, in the, next, uh, the next few minutes. Um, if the CO2 emissions can, has to be numbers, uh, you cannot have letters as part of the field that requires numbers. And the CCR automatically detects this. So if by mistake, instead of uh, a zero, you put an O, then the system will automatically detect this and will give you an error message. Um, however, there might be other uh, you know, mistakes that may be made and uh, the system may not detect them. And this is where the IKO super user will come in to check for any other format correctness. And then based on, on the review done by the IKO super user, and if mistakes and errors are found, then the change, the, the, um, the status of, uh, um, of the year record can change back into in progress with another automatic email notification to the Corsia focal point that further information has to be provided, uh, something has to be corrected, whatever uh, the problem is. If, however, there are no errors, there are no mistakes, uh, data is perfect, then the IKO super user will lock the information and this information will be used to produce IKO Corsia documents. This process is also summarized as uh, GU mentions in uh, the leaflet number A uh, that we that we provided to you and um, also there is uh, this diagram as well as you see it on your screen also with uh, some uh, description of the key steps uh, just above it on the flip side of uh, the leaflet A. So having gone through this uh, for the second time um, I think what, um, what we can do is we can start you know looking into the CCR and how information is to be reported. The, um, what we have also done in terms of providing guidance to the users is uh, to create another leaflet, the, the one with a letter D on it, which deals specifically with reporting on CO2 emissions for 2019 and 2020. On the front side of this uh, leaflet, you can find what kind of information you need to have uh, to insert into the CCR the reporting deadlines and also some reporting tips that we thought was useful for the users to keep in mind as they are entering information into the CCR. On the flip side of the leaflet, there is um, some more guidance on how information has to be inserted, the different options that you have uh, when you create a year record, when you add or edit um, data, and also how to submit to ICAO. Um, also keep in mind that um, over the um, once we have the version one of uh, the CCR launched on uh, on its website, we will also provide a complete manual, a user manual uh, that will give very detailed guidance on all aspects of uh, the CCR. What you see on your screen, or what you see on the leaflets that uh, we have provided to you, this two pager basically tries to summarize information which in the user manual extends over you know, 10 to 12 pages. So this gives you like a high level summary of the information that you can find in the, the user uh, manual that also gives you more guidance, more tips and more information. 
Um, and this, again, as I mentioned, will become available at the same time as uh, when the version one of the CCR is uh, launched on, on, on its website. So having uh, said this, uh, let's do a live demonstration of uh, the CCR. Um, and this, again, as I mentioned, is gonna be, uh, it's gonna focus specifically on this, how to report CO2 emissions. So I will stop my presentation uh, and I will go into uh, the CCR. Um, I'm already logged in, but I'm gonna log out so you can start from the beginning. Again, you all have your username. You have all set up your passwords uh, for the system. So you, um, you just enter this information in uh, the fields and uh, then you basically enter the CCR. Oops. Okay, so I'm logged in. Um, I'm logged in as um, the IK that I have is uh, Monaco. Um, I am the course here, focal point of Monaco and I need to provide information on CO2 emissions. Uh, one thing that I, before I start this, um, I just want, I want to um, emphasize, and I don't think I can emphasize strong enough, you must never, ever give your username and your password to anybody else. These are personal information. Keep in mind that some of the information in the CCR may be confidential. So you, as Corsia Focal Points especially, you have to have direct control of who has access to your CCR account. You will nominate any test, any state users uh, that you want to um, allow to have access to the information, but you cannot share your credentials with anybody else. And if um, you find out that your information has been somehow compromised, somebody knows your password, then please let us know immediately and also immediately change your password uh, using uh, the forgot password link on, um, uh, on the landing page of uh, the CCR. This is extremely important and always you know, keep this in mind. Uh, it is crucial that Unauthorized people do not have access to maybe sensitive information in the CCR. So having, having said this, um, how you start reporting information on CO2 emissions. First of all, you can use the navigation menu on the left-hand side. So the, the fourth option from the top, you know, home, urban operators, verification, fourth option is report CO2 emissions. If you click there, then what you will, um, end up seeing on your screen is uh, what you can see, um, uh, you know, what, what you can see on your screen right now. Um, it, for the first time that you do this, it will be empty. You will not have any records here. And the first thing that you have to do as a Corsia focal point, because the Corsia focal point is the only user in the CCR that can create a new year record, is to actually create one. So you can do this uh, for the first time by um, just going into the menu, which says add and then quick add. And when you do that, I, there will be a pop-up on your screen. Uh, the first thing that you're gonna see is the, the name um, of your state. In my case, it's Monaco. And so what you will notice is that this cannot be changed. Uh, so even if you click on it, there is nothing else to, uh, to be chosen. You cannot choose none, this is a mistake. So this cannot be uh, changed. And then you select your reporting year. So we're gonna select the reporting year 2019. Once you have done this, then you can create uh, the year record. And there you have it. Um, very simple, you have created now your first year records and this is Monaco, your state, you know, in, your, in your case would be a different name, of course, uh, 2019. And as we mentioned before, automatically the system sets the status of this year record to in progress. Now, what you also see uh, next uh, in the beginning of the record is um, an icon, it's like a pencil icon. And this means that you can actually edit this particular record. So if you click on the pencil icon, you will the screen will change and what you will see is um, the landing page for this particular year record. 
What you will notice at the top is that uh, you have four tabs. So you have the details tab, the CO2 emissions tapers, CO2 emissions airplane operators, and the CO2 emissions data journal. On the details, again, you have um, some very basic information about this year records. Again, you have information about your ICAO state, and this is read only. You cannot change. Even if you click on it, nothing happens. The reporting year cannot change. Uh, you have already set it. So this uh, top inf information there is, you have no access to. You, then in the next parts of uh, this details uh, tab, you have the total CO2 emissions. For the years 2019 and 2020, you will see here the total CO2 emissions per state pair. Of course, as you know, uh, for these two years, which are the two baseline years, um, these offsetting requirements do not apply. There is um, no such thing as offsetting requirements for these two years. Offsetting requirements kick in in 2021. So no information is provided uh, for um, for the first two rows and also um, for the two for the 2019 and 2020 years no information is required on a per aeroplane operator basis so only information on state pairs will be provided will be submitted through the ccr so you only have one box in um, this particular area where you will see the total CO2 emissions. This is not something that you need to worry about. You cannot edit this information. This is automatically calculated for you based on information that you will provide on the second tab, the CO2 emission papers. And this will be updated as you change the information in the state pairs. I will demonstrate this um, later. In the bottom part of your screen, you will see an area called data status. And this is where the status of the information can be changed. Now, for now, uh, this particular year record uh, has a status of in progress. And this is automatically set. And you can also see over here when this was done and by whom, uh, who was uh, the person who actually created uh, this particular uh, record. I will come back to this later when, after we have inserted some information and I can uh, show you how to change the status um, of a year record after you have inserted information. So this is the details tab. The second tab, which is um, the most important one, is where you actually insert your information. And um, the first thing that you need to do, similar to when you created um, a year record is actually to create your first entry in this particular um, record. So to do this, uh, you can do it manually by selecting add and then full ads um, from uh, the menu. And then you have this screen where from which you can actually make a number of different selections. So the first thing that you need to select is uh, the departing state for this particular uh, pair. So you have a list of all 193 states, and so you can uh, select which ones you want um, you want to find. So let's say you want to go from Monaco, and then this goes to um, let's say Germany, and um, then the next thing that we need to do is to actually provide information on the CO2 emissions. And CO2 emissions has to be a number. It cannot be any letters, it cannot be anything like that. So if I, you know, I guess, and I, as I mentioned, if I make a mistake um, and instead of um, a zero, I put um, a number uh, O, then this automatically gives me a mistake. Uh, the system checks the information and says the field must be a number. And one, two, three, O oh, is not a number. If I put zero, then it will accept it as a number. You can insert information up to two decimal points. So you can have, you know, 45. Um, and that's it. You can, uh, you can enter more if you like. You can have like more uh, numbers, but they are not taken into account. The number is truncated up to two decimal uh, points. So um, the next 
fields in uh, this particular one is whether the information is confidential or not. And this is where you have the option to indicate whether these CO2 emissions are confidential. And this will be, this will be determined between the airplane operator and the state in accordance with the provisions of uh, Annex 16, Volume 4. In uh, some situations where you have uh, maybe one operator that uh, has flights between uh, specific you know, state pairs, then this information may be considered confidential and um, a state operator can ask its state, which it's, it's attributed to, to indicate while reporting this information to ICAO that this information is confidential. If this is indeed the case, then you can uh, click on the, on the box next to confidential data, and then your data, this information has been uh, marked as confidential data. Keep in mind that both the Corsia focal point and all the state users will be able to see this confidential data. That's why I mentioned in the beginning of my presentation that you have to be extremely careful who has access uh, to your account, to your state's account, and you must never ever give out your, um, your passwords and your username to anybody else. So once you are done, you have uh, put in this information, you click on create, and then this state pair will appear on uh, the page that uh, you saw earlier on the CO2 emissions uh, state pairs uh, tab. So now you have your first state pair uh, inserted into the, uh, into the system. So again, it is from Monaco to Germany, the CO2 emissions are those. Um, you will notice that uh, under subject to offsetting requirements, it's not applicable because again, for 2019 and 2020, there is no requirement for offsetting um, emissions under the Corsia. And of course, the information is marked as uh, confidential. One thing to keep in mind is that these particular state pairs are one way pairs. So this is information on all flights from all aeroplane operators from Monaco to Germany. If you want, um, if you want to be complete and uh, you provide information on, um, you know, on the um, on the um, uh, on the opposite direction, you have to again select um, that this is now Germany. All the flights going from Germany to Monaco. And then again, you insert um, information, um, whatever this is, in terms of CO2 emissions, and you can click again confidential data if the information is confidential. So now you have uh, two pairs in your system, um, and uh, this is basically the beginning of you start building up information into the, into the CCR. I mentioned earlier that um, on your details tab, there is um, one field which is automatically calculated for you, and this is the total CO2 emissions. So you will notice now that I inserted information on two state pairs, and this um, Monaco, Germany, Germany, Monaco, this is the information, and the total for these two state pairs is already reflected in your uh, details tab. Uh, and again, you cannot change this number. This is, um, even if you click on it, nothing happens. You cannot, um, you don't have access to it. It's automatically done for you. Now, this is, a, this is a quite simple way of uh, inserting information. And if you have, you know, a limited number of uh, state pairs, then maybe this is um, an appropriate way of inserting information. However, in uh, some cases, uh, there might be the situation where you have uh, a lot of state pairs and you do not want to do that manually by inserting information one by one. The CCR gives you the option to upload information using um, a CSV file. A CSV file is comma separated values uh, file uh, where it has to be a specific format. And I will show you what it's supposed to look like. Actually, what we're going to do is we are going to provide uh, templates 
for CSV files on um, the um, on the website of the CCR. So all users will have access uh, to these templates and they can use them. But what you see on your screen right now, it is basically the very simple template for uh, CO2 emissions. Four columns. The first one uh, is the name of the state, uh, the departing state. Two is the arrival state. CO2 emissions is the amount of the CO2 emissions on this specific state. And again, indication of whether the information is confidential. Uh, please note that true means information is confidential. False means it is not uh, confidential. So this is the very simple template. Um, and of course, you know, you can use this. Uh, one thing that I would like to point out is that you cannot use Excel file. This information, although can be edited in Excel, it is a CSV file. So when you create your own files, always make sure that they are saved as CSV files. This is extremely important because otherwise you will not be able to import um, the information into the CCR. Does not accept uh, importing information from Excel. So let's see how we can do this, how we can use this information to uh, enter into the CCR. You can import a CSV file from the option tools that you have at the top of your middle of your screen there. Uh, the first option is import CSV. I said that you cannot, in, cannot import Excel, but you can export Excel. Like I'll show you later on how you can export all this information in Excel or in CSV. So the only option you have here is to import a CSV file. So when you click on it, then you end up with this screen. And uh, then depending on the browser that you have, uh, this part over here may look different. Um, I'm using uh, Firefox, so this is how it is implemented. But if you are using um, a different, if you're using Edge, or if you're using Chrome, then this may look different, but it performs exactly the same task. This is where you actually browse your computer to try and find uh, where uh, your uh, information is. So I have it in my folder here. So this is what I was looking at. I open it and then I upload the information. The first thing that the CCR does is uh, to read the file and uh, give you a preview of what is in the file that you provided. The first column that you see on your screen is not something that you provided. It is not something you have to provide. This is something that the CCR does automatically. It links one specific, um, you know, uh, one specific row with a year and a record. So don't worry about, you know, this record one. This is nothing to do with you. So what you provided is the information from two CO2 emissions and indication of confidentiality. So you check the information, you say, yes, this is within, you know, it is correct. So you confirm and you continue to import. So the CCR, again, uh, looks at all the information. And uh, if everything is okay, it says data imported successfully. So you can um, return to uh, report CO2 emissions and see the information that you have inserted into the CCR. So originally you had only two pairs, uh, Monaco, Germany, Germany, Monaco. That's what you did manually, you insert this information. But now you have already, uh, you know, you have more uh, because of what you inserted using uh, the CSV file. So you have now a total of eight um, records into your, um, you have eight entries into your year record. And um, one thing that, um, that you can do with this uh, screen, of course, you can, you know, uh, check the information, you can do a number of things, but you can also, if you like, you can um, use the headings of, uh, of the table to sort them, either in ascending order or descending order. So, you know, if you click it once, now it's, um, um, it's done in, um, um, in, a, in, a descend in ascending order. If you click it again, it will be in, um, in, a, in the opposite. So starting from Uganda, Tuvalu, et cetera, et cetera. And you can do this from two, from the, from the departing state, the arrival state, 
um, even with the CO2 emissions, you can list them any which way uh, you want to. So this is um, uh, you know, a very simple way of inserting information. However, you have to be very careful um, when you have CSV files. First of all, you have to make sure that the format is like you see on your screen right now. You cannot change this around. If you change this around, then the information that will be inserted, it will be nonsense. It will not make any sense to the system and will be rejected. However, we are all humans and we can, you know, we can make mistakes. So I'll try to show you some things that may uh, go wrong when you start, when you want to upload information. So let's try another file um, uh, when we want to import um, information. So again, um, we'll try something different. We'll try to see what happens if there is a mistake in the, the name of the state. The uh, CCR has a predefined list of uh, states, and this uh, corresponds to the 193 states of ICAO. And all of these, uh, the name of the states are on the ICAO website, and it is we're using for the CCR uh, the version in English only, uh, so you cannot uh, insert information in any other language. Um, and if you make a mistake, then let's see what happens in that particular case. So uh, the, again, uh, the CCR reads the information. Uh, now you have a different message over here. You have received three new papers. Please review the data below before we import into uh, the system. But now you have a one new tools in the Excel file. Actually, it's not the Excel, it's a CSV file, but uh, this is something that it's been, um, will be corrected in the, um, in, in the new version. This means that uh, one of your uh, entries in your two column is not correct. And actually, you can even see more information about this. If you click on, um, uh, on the link just below the table, it says following records also have to be added. The system uh, for now, and again, uh, this particular message uh, is, um, has been identified as something that needs to be uh, made more clear to the users. It will be different in, um, in the version of the CCR, in the version one of the CCR. But at least you know, for now, it will give you uh, what the actual problem is. In this case, it's the name Korea. Um, as you know, uh, there are two Koreas. Uh, there is uh, uh, the North Korea and the South Korea, and uh, the names for the two are different. So by indicating Korea, this is not a legitimate name of a state. So in, in our case, we, um, what, what we wanted to um, include was the Republic of uh, Korea. Um, and uh, so the system identified this is a problem and you have no option to import this information. The only thing that you can do is you can cancel uh, this import that you tried uh, to do and then go back to your CSV file, make the correction. So let's go back and see um, you know, how we can do that. So again, as I mentioned before, uh, although you are editing in Excel, you have to make sure that your file is a CSV file, is not an Excel file. So this is not Korea, this is a mistake. This is the public of Korea. Everything else seems to be okay in terms of the CO2 emissions. So we save. Yes. So now the file has been saved, it has been corrected. So let's try again, uh, see what happens in the CCR. So imports, this file has, we have corrected now, uploads. Again, now the system reads again, uh, the three state pairs, uh, it doesn't give you any warnings, uh, no errors. Uh, it has found that the information uh, is correct as expected. And you actually now can confirm and if everything else is okay, and you can continue with the import process. So you click on confirm and import, uh, data imported successfully. So this is done um, successfully as well. So these new state pairs have been added into your uh, year record. 
So now you have a total of um, 11 uh, records. Uh, you had your first uh, eight. Now you have um, you know, three more that you added. And now you see on the screen that um, you have a total uh, count of 11. That's the, number of, um, that's the number of state pairs that you have in there. Uh, the size, the page size is 10, but you can actually change this. Uh, you can change up to 100. So, you know, if you want to increase, let's say 50, then you're going to be able to see all of them on one screen. If um, you don't want to do that, uh, then you could use, so if you went back into, um, you know, into 10 again, uh, what you will see is that there are two pages over here, so at the, at the bottom uh, corner of your screen. So you can move between uh, different pages and you can look at information like this, um, or you can change the actual, you know, page size and you can see all the information uh, that you have on one screen. Of course, if you have more than a hundred um, entries, you will, you know, by default, will have uh, more than one screens that you have to scroll through if uh, you wanted to. So this is uh, how the uh, system handles errors in uh, CSV files. Uh, there is, however, there is other errors that uh, could happen. So um, let's look at uh, another example of you know what uh, could go wrong. Uh, you could have a situation where by mistake uh, you entered information for a domestic pair. So now you have this file: uh, Japan, South Africa, South Africa, Canada. But then your third pair is Canada, Canada. This is a domestic pair. And this, um, if it is genuine, if it is uh, not a mistake in terms of, uh, you know, the actual state pair, so this is represent, you know, real flights, a domestic state pair, even if it is real, if it happens, is not supposed to be reported in the CCR. The CCR is only there to handle emissions which are covered under Corsia, and Corsia, of course, deals with international aviation. So either this uh, this this particular paper has been entered into the CSV file by mistake, so it is a domestic pair, and by mistake was inserted as part of the other papers, or Canada to Canada is not. But you know this may be um, you know Chad. For example, and you know, by mistake, sort of, you know, typing Chad, you type you type Canada. You know, it it can happen. You know, you can have a, a number of different mistakes. So depending on what you know the mistake is, it has to be corrected. But before we make any corrections, let's see how the CCR handles a situation like this. So let's try again. We're gonna import a CSV file. So again browse, try to find it. So we have this file now, upload. And what it doesn't give you any error as before. It says that, you know, we have received three new uh, CO2 emission papers. And the reason why it doesn't give you any mistakes is because everything is correct in terms of, um, you know, the, you know, the, the name of the states, uh, the from and to, everything is correct. At this point in time, it doesn't recognize that there is a problem here. It just tells you that everything else seems to be correct. So if you confirm and you continue with importing, let's see what it's gonna do. It says data imported successfully. And this is partially correct because not all information has been imported successfully. And uh, when, while we had, um, uh, and another training a few a few weeks ago where it was training under the um, body partnerships in terms of um, uh, providing information to trainers under the body partnerships on uh, the act Corsia uh, we identified this as a, as an error in the system we are discussing with our developers so this will be corrected in version one but what the system has done actually it has imported successfully uh, the um, the pairs that are international, but not the one which is domestic. So if you look, you know, at this list of, um, at, at the list of, um, let me increase actually that one to see all of them. If you have the list of state pairs that you have already imported, you will not see any state pair which says Canada, Canada. So it recognized that this is wrong, 
It did not give you any warning, but uh, in the version one of the CCR, you will get, the user will get a warning on, uh, on this particular one. And then the user will be asked to make whatever correction needs to be made. So this is um, uh, this is how you know for now this training version of the tool you know handles this particular situation. So it does it correctly in terms of inserting the international pairs, but you know further information needs to be provided to the user and will be provided um, to the user in uh, the version one. Um, one more thing that could go wrong is uh, if you do not insert emissions for a specific state pair. So, for example, in this particular state pair, you have uh, one to five of them, but in the, in the fifth one, the emissions are zero. The emissions on a state pair cannot be zero. Uh, so this is not valid information that uh, could be provided in the CCR. So let's see in this particular case how the system handles it. So if, you, if we import this particular file, again, same process, find the file, upload, let's see what it does. We have, again, the system has uh, read the information um, in terms of, you know, the, uh, what is expected is, is correct. You know, there is numbers under CO2. I mean, zero qualifies as a number. Um, and all the, the names of the states are correct. So it, it reads all the information. Um, and then you confirm and you continue to import. And then it gives you a mistake, an error. It says row number five, value is blank or duplicate or validation failed. And you can actually download the error. So if you click on that, what we'll do is we will open an Excel file and it will show you exactly uh, what happened. So it will show you that it was able to successfully import one, two, three, four, but there was an error in this particular entry here. So the error was that there were no CO2 emissions provided. So what the, um, what the, the CCR did uh, was it imported all the other four state pairs, but not the fifth one, the one that was a problematic one. So again, we have um, you know our uh, information here um, for all state uh, pairs that were successfully inserted into the system. Um, one of the things that we are doing with our developer right now is uh, looking again at all those um, warning errors that uh, the system produces, and uh, they're going to be made uh, consistent because there is some inconsistency in this um, you know earlier version of uh, the CCR. But uh, the, our aim is that for the version one of the tool, there will be a bit more consistency and the errors, uh, the warnings that would be more uh, useful for uh, the user. So this is what I want to demonstrate to you for this part of uh, our, um, our remote training, how you can insert information manually or by um, importing information um, uh, using uh, using CSV files. Uh, the, uh, for 2019 and 2020, uh, there is a requirement only to provide CO2 emissions on state pairs. Uh, the tab which reads CO2 emissions airplane operators is inactivated, so there's nothing you can do here. Uh, there is no add functionality in this uh, particular tab. Um, there, there, is, there is no requirement for you to do anything. Uh, the fourth tab is uh, very similar to what uh, Ji Yun showed you earlier about tracking of uh, information. So this is where you can actually, you know, see what happened to this particular year record. So uh, what happened is starting from um, earlier today at uh, 7.59 this morning and 37 seconds, where uh, test user CCR added uh, this particular record, then at different points in time, I viewed the record um, and this is specifically for the year record itself there is the same kind of uh, journal uh, applies to other parts of um, of the record so if we look into for example um, you know one specific uh, state pair that you entered earlier 
Then you have a, another journal, which is specific for this particular record. So you have here, again, information that was added um, on that uh, date, uh, on that time, on that date, and that's when I view it, which it was basically right now. Uh, so for each entry of the year record and for the year record itself, there is a recording of all the different actions, you know, who changed, what, when, and, um, and this is extremely important when you look into the traceability of uh, the changes in um, the CCR. And, um, uh, and, you know, I think it's extremely important feature, especially for the Corsia focal point, to know uh, who introduced the changes and when. So if you need to go back and, you know, make changes, then you can actually track uh, the timing and the date of the changes and you can go back and ask for clarifications maybe from a specific user. So let's go back into our year records. So press cancel here. Oops, sorry. Too many times. Um, so we go back into the report CO2 emissions. Uh, we have, again, our year record. I just demonstrate to you how you can insert information manually and also using CSV files. Um, what I did not show you so far is uh, what do you do after you have inserted all the information. So if you remember from uh, our, uh, from our uh, data flow process, we are at a stage right now where both the state user and the Corsia focal point can add information, can edit information. Oh, and one thing that I, I forgot to show you is that you can actually delete uh, state birds. So if you know you made a mistake, you did not want to include a state pair, what you can actually do is you can actually delete it. And to do that, you can click on the arrow next uh, to the particular entry that you want to delete, the state pair, and then click on the delete, which is at the bottom. You will be asked to provide a confirmation that you are absolutely sure you want to delete this, and then delete it. And then it will disappear from your list of state birds. Um, this particular action um, is, um, you know, you, you have to be, you know, again, when you delete things from uh, the system, you have to be 100% sure that, you know, this is uh, correct. Um, and um, there, is, there is no option to delete everything. You cannot delete a year record. You can delete the individual entries within the year record, but you cannot go back, for example, to this list and say, okay, I create this record, but now I want to delete it. There is no such option. So if you created this record by mistake, you did not mean uh, to create it, that's fine. You don't have to worry about it. You can leave it in your uh, CCR account in progress and nothing will happen to it. You don't have to worry about it. Um, but, as I just showed you, you can go into the record and you can delete different entries if you uh, so wish. So, going back into uh, the details tab, one of the things that I did not show you how to do is how to change the status of this year record. So now the state user, the Corsia focal point, they have um, finished the work, they have completed um, all the inserting of the data, editing, adding, editing, deleting, whatever they want to do. So now either the state user or the Corsia focal point have the option of changing the status. And they can do this by clicking on this arrow and then they can change from in progress to complete. To make sure that this change takes effect, you have to click on save. Otherwise, it will not happen, nothing will happen. So click on save, and then what the CCR will do is what comes next. It has changed the status from in progress to complete, and you can see it there now. So if um, a state user did that particular action, then the Corsia focal points will receive an, autom an automated email message saying that 
state user with a specific name has changed the status of the e-record to complete. Now it's your time to review uh, this record. So the Corsia focal point, having received this email message, uh, goes into the record. Now it is complete and um, checks the information, goes into the CO2 emission papers, uh, checks that everything is, um, um, is, is okay, verifies the information, uh, checks against maybe uh, the emissions reports of, um, of an operator, performs whatever additions, uh, calculations they need to do. And once they are satisfied that this uh, information is correct, then they can submit to ICAO by changing the status back to, the, 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 sorry, they can change the status from complete to ready. However, if the, uh, the Corsia focal point found that the, the state user needs to add more information, if you remember, a complete status means that only the Corsia focal point can introduce changes. So in order for the state user to be able to make changes, then the Corsia focal point can change back the status to in progress. So if they do that, if the Corsia focal point does that and press again, save, always remember that you have to press save then uh, the status of this particular year record is changed back to in progress. And now the state user can, you know, add more information, can, you know, make changes, whatever needs to be made. Again, um, you know, this thing can happen, you know, over and over again, as many times. Uh, of course, you know, the ideal situation is that it will not be happening, you know, constantly. And a state user doesn't have to change from in progress to complete um, on a constant basis, this will only be done only once, you know, the information is indeed complete and there is no need for further um, edits in the CO2 emissions. However, you know, it, it, the system gives you uh, the option to go back between different statuses of the year record, depending on what kind of actions need to be uh, taken. So anyway, we'll do it one more time. So now again, it's in progress. We can go back to complete. Um, you know, save once again. And um, now the, I will show you how you can submit uh, to ICAO. So again, it's back to the uh, Corsia focal points. Um, all the information now is in, it has been checked, it has been verified, everything seems to be okay. Uh, everybody's confident that it is okay. So now let's submit to ICAO. The Corsia focal point only has this option to change from complete to ready. A state user does not see this kind of option on his or her screen. So when you are ready to submit to ICAO, change the status to ready, save, and then you get this a pop-up that will ask you to confirm. It says, are you sure you want to save this? The data starts will be ready. This will make the record read only and send a message to the ICAO super user. You say, yes, I'm confident, this is my data. Okay, so now uh, the record is, um, the status of the record is uh, changed to ready. Uh, it will appear on your screen, that's it. It's, um, and now you will notice that there is a different icon next to your record. There is an eye icon, before it was a pencil, if you remember. The eye icon, although, you know, if I go over the icon, it says edit, it's not actually edit, it's view. You can only look at the information, but there is nothing else. You cannot change anything at this time. So, and you also get a warning up here that the record is read only and no changes can be made. So if you want to make changes, you have to contact ICAO and we'll show you in the last part of, um, you know, this morning, how to send that, um, a service request for this purpose. So now it is, um, uh, it is again, it's a read only, so you can look at the information, but you cannot make any changes whatsoever in the state pairs. So everything is not pencil anymore. It's the eye icon. So even if you click on any of those, um, you have no access to this information. So you cannot change anything from here. It's read only records. You can only uh, view the information. So this is how it is done um, in terms of reporting CO2 emissions. Um, I walked you through.
from the beginning, how you create a year record, how you insert information, and how you submit uh, to ICAO. Uh, and these are, you know, the specific three actions that you have as uh, state users and as uh, Corsia focal points in the CCR. Uh, this applies to, of course, all five reporting areas. I demonstrate to you on the CO2 emissions because the focus of our training is uh, the CO2 emissions. Uh, one other thing that I would like to show you, and uh, this will not be available for 2019, but um, you know, once you have created your first year record that has been submitted, what you can do is in, for you know, the following years, instead from uh, starting from zero, what you can actually do is, is you can use your previous year submission as the basis for a new one. So I'll show you how this can be done. So let's say now you want, you have done, you are done with 2019 and now you want to report emissions for the year 2020. In this particular case, what you could do is you can say add, but not quick add as before, but copy from. And when you do that, you select the other reporting year. And now you have a slightly different pop-up that asks you to, first of all, uh, specify from where you want to copy from. So it's so, okay, I'm going to report from the 2019 record. And now I want to the, my new uh, reporting year with 2020 and create. What this does is it creates a replica of the 2019 um, year record for 2020, but it does not copy the actual CO2 emission values. What it does, it makes an exact copy of the state pairs only. So I'll show you what this means. So now you're in the 2020. Um, let's actually, let's start from, again, your list of uh, year records. Now you have, you had the 2019. Now you have the 2020, as you can see, the icon here is pencil, which means you can actually edit uh, the record. So now if you click on it, what you will notice is that in the tab which says CO2 emission state pairs, um, it gives you a number, 16, which is the actual number of state pairs included. But the CO2 emissions are zero. There are no values there. You have to fill them in manually. So if you were a situation where you had, you know, a limited number of, um, you know, state pairs like this, and you knew that there were no changes into the specific state pairs, you could, you know, use this particular option to um, actually, um, you know, use the same state pairs and manually insert uh, the information. Again, this would work. Uh, in case uh, that, um, you know, you had um, a limited number of state pairs, but if you have hundreds, then this might not be an option, you know, for you uh, to do it manually. You may want to do it by using a CSV file, as I showed you earlier how to do it. So you create, you know, if you want to use a CSV file, the better option is to start, you know, with an empty uh, year records and then upload information. Um, Again, what you will notice, and that's something that the developer is fixing right now, uh, the, under the subset of setting requirements for 2020, again, is not applicable. It's not no. Uh, this is a mistake, and uh, we have identified this to the uh, developer, and they are fixing it as we speak. Uh, so in the version of the CCR, the first version of the CCR, this will be uh, identified correctly. So this is again, not for now, it is for next year uh, from uh, when you want to report the 2020 uh, emissions, but these are the different ways of you can, how you can uh, create a year record and how you can insert information. Um, what, we, um, um, what we have prepared for you is um, an exercise, but given that um, you know, the time that has taken us to go through um, you know, the, this demonstration, um, what um, we can do is we can, um, you can do this as homework. Uh, the exercise is very simple. And uh, we will ask you basically to insert information, create a year record for 2019, 
and manually insert um, information on uh, some state curves just to get a feel of uh, how the system uh, works. Uh, so we will do this, it is uh, 8.45 uh, and we still have to go through um, the, um, uh, the service request. But, uh, you know, for now, I will, uh, I will stop here. I will see if there are any questions. And I see that there were some questions in the chat, so I'll try to answer them. And uh, then uh, maybe continue from, uh, from there. So, um, okay, let's start from the top. Okay, um, I, I hope I was close enough to the microphone. Uh, apologies if the sound was not very good. Um, I hope that was solved. Um, there was one question, as a state with multiple operators operating on the same route, should we list its airline route? Um, no, uh, this is state pairs. Uh, so what you as a Corsia focal point or a state user is you have to aggregate all emissions from your all airplane operators on specific state pairs and provide one number only. You do not provide information on state pairs for individual um, airplane operators. And of course, not on individual um, routes within a state, right? So you aggregate from all airports within one state, all airports within another state, um, and then you provide aggregate information on a state pair, uh, not on a city pair or anything like that. Uh, what if there is a typo in the state name? I think I, I demonstrated this. Um, if you try to enter information uh, using a CSV file and there is a mistake in the state name, uh, then the uh, system, the CCR gives you uh, an um, um, a warning about this. Um, Germany, Germany, um, I'm not sure exactly what this comment was, um, but again, if, if there is a mistake in the CSV file, uh, then it should be recognized by, by the CCR. Again, uh, when uh, uploading data, I showed you the process, uh, how uh, how this is done. So I think, I believe this was answered. Some questions uh, for CO2 emission state pairs in the present exam from Germany to Monaco. How the CFP calculate this data from all state airlines and what if some data from some airlines are, is incomplete? Um, well, you have to make sure that um, information that, that you are using is from verified uh, reports, which are supposed to be complete. If there are gaps in the data, they have to be identified um, either by the airplane operator uh, itself or by the verifier. And this has to be very, very clear. Um, in cases where the data gaps can be filled in, uh, there, are, there are provisions in the Annex 16 on how this can be done. And um, it, it should be done. If uh, this information cannot be completed, um, then uh, maybe the Corsia focal point has additional source of information and maybe they can fill in information that an airplane operator was not able to provide. We believe that this will be very limited uh, situations um, that you know would fall under this category, but it is not unlikely to happen. However, in cooperation with your airplane operators, uh, you can uh, work with them as part of um, the emissions monitoring plan, as part of the emissions reports, to work with them to identify ways on how to fill data gaps and how to make sure that um, the information is as complete as possible. Um, so note the CFP normally have data from its airline. Uh, yes, um, I think I, I answered that. Question two was, if an operator A, year 2019, is joined another B for one airline in 2020. Okay, this goes, uh, this particular question goes into how you report airplane operators. Um, first of all, for 2019, 2020, there is no requirement to provide CO2 emissions on individual airplane operators. 
This particular requirement will kick in from 2021 um, onwards. Um, so for the baseline, it is only state per uh, information. Uh, but this issue of active, inactive, and what it means in terms of uh, the list of airplane operators, I'm not going to discuss this um, right now. Uh, what I want to say in relation to that is that for 2019, uh, make sure you have your emissions reports from all the airplane operators attributed uh, to your state, that they are complete, and they have information on state pairs that you can aggregate, as I mentioned earlier, and provide one number um, in um, um, one number for each uh, state per for all your aeroplane um, operators. Aeroplators, sorry, aeroplane operators, which are not with, um, maybe they have some kind of partnership. Uh, maybe they are um, a subsidiary of another um, aeroplane operator. If the state has authorized a situation where um, a subsidiary reports together. Uh, with uh, the uh, operator to which this is a subsidiary, uh, then there will be again one number, one emissions report with one set of um, uh, information. The issue of active, inactive airplane operators, we will discuss this um, at a future event, um, and this hopefully will be the in-person seminars we're going to have on, um, uh, on, uh, on Corsia. There was another question about what is meant by the aircraft registered in a particular state. Well, um, yes and no. Uh, the language that has been used in the Annex 16, it is attribution. Um, the attribution for, for an aeroplane operator can be done in three ways, um, as it is described in the Annex 16, Volume 4. Uh, one of one way is uh, to use the ICAO designator, the three-letter ICAO designator. The second one is to use the AOC, uh, the uh, Airplane Operator Certificates. And the third option, if there is no um, AOC or if there is no uh, designator, then the place of juridical uh, registration. And these are the three options that, are, um, that, are, that can be used for an airplane operator to be attributed to a specific state. Um, the question about state pairs or aerodrome pairs, again, uh, the, that particular requirement is from the state to the operator. The, uh, if the state would like the, uh, their operators to report on an aerodrome per basis, then they can request them to do so. However, for the CCR, the states have to report information on a state per basis only. There is no option to provide information on an aerodrome uh, per basis. So the tab that you will see as airplane operators is not the aerodrome uh, pairs or anything like that. It is to be used later on to provide single uh, values for total emissions from airplane operators um, in the future. And I believe that we answered the last um, question as well. Um, but you can follow, um, you know, what can be done in terms of uh, the service requests. And you can use, um, you know, some of the instructions we're going to give you on this uh, presentation to create a service request. So let me, it's a short presentation and um, it will not take me too long. We have enough time at the end for a few more uh, questions, uh, you know, from you. So for the last part, the service uh, request, this is an, um, a functionality that uh, can be accessed only by Corsia Focal Points through the navigation menu on the homepage. So for the Corsia Focal Points, the navigation menu has uh, this last option, service request. This is not available for state users. State users cannot send uh, such a service request uh, to ICAO um, super user. So this is where it can be accessed by, again, the number that you will see next uh, to, the, um, to the menu entry indicates the number of the service requests that have been submitted uh, to ICAO. 
So what is our service request? Service request is a predefined request for assistance that uh, a Corsia focal point requires from ICAO on a specific issue. In addition to requesting for assistance, the Corsia focal point can provide information to ICAO. And I will explain to you uh, this, you know, how this can be done, uh, uh, you know, next. Again, very important, the only CCR user that can initiate a service request is a Corsia focal point. Uh, no state users have access to this um, uh, function. Now, to create a service request, it's a rather simple process. Um, you, similar to what you saw earlier about adding a year record, you have um, you know, a similar option. To, you can follow uh, the process by adding, and then you have two sub options, either full add or quick add. There is no major difference between those two options. It's just for the quick add, you're gonna see a pop-up um, on your window, uh, on your screen. For the full ad, you will see um, a web form um, on, on on your screen. That's that's the only that's the only difference. So um, once you have created a service request, uh, you need to specify what kind of type um, a service request is. Um, uh, what kind of uh, request? What kind of assistance needs from ICAO, or what kind of information you would like to provide uh, to ICAO? And there's a drop-down menu uh, from which you can select the specific type of um, the service uh, request. The uh, CCR also gives you options to provide more information about the specific request if you feel that more information is helpful for the IKO uh, super user. Now, in terms of what are the different types of uh, service requests, the first one is called data upload request. And uh, this one uh, gives the option to the users, to the Corsia focal points, to ask help from ICAO to upload information in the CCR. Again, I would like to emphasize that such a request should be last resort. Um, it is not expected that ICAO will uh, receive 193 requests from all um, you know, Corsia focal points asking for ICAO to upload the information. Only if there is a disruption in the system or if there is a genuine technical problem and uh, the Corsia focal point is unable to upload the information, then of course the ICAO is there to help. But again, this is last resort if all other options have been exhausted and uh, the Corsia focal point is unable to upload any data um, in, in the CCR. Again, I would like to emphasize one thing. ICAO can upload the information, but still it will be the responsibility of the Corsia focal point to check the information that has been uploaded and make sure it is correct. And it's the responsibility of the Corsia focal point to submit to ICAO through the CCR. The ICAO, even, even if ICAO uploads the information, it doesn't mean that automatically it becomes a submission. Uh, to ICAO. The data flow process has to be respected. So ICAO, yes, can help with uploading the information, but the Corsia focal point has to go through the process to review the information, to change the status, to ready to submit when the information is, is correct. The next option, the next two options is uh, about releasing or unlocking information that has already been submitted. So if you remember from uh, the data flow that we showed to you earlier, the um, information can be submitted to ICAO by changing the status to ready. And when you do that, then automatically the year record becomes read-only and as a Corsia focal point, you cannot make any changes. Similarly, uh, once the a year record has been received by ICAO, has been checked, there are no problems, then um, the IKO super user will lock the year records. And again, the Corsia focal point cannot make any changes. If the Corsia focal point identifies mistakes in the submit information and would like to make changes and make corrections to 
a year records, which is in ready or locked uh, status, then you can use the service request to request ICAO to either release a ready status year records or to unlock a submitted data for further editing. Again, we do not expect this to happen a lot. Uh, of course, again, you know, we are humans, we make mistakes and we try to correct, you know, the mistakes. Uh, one thing very important, and also GU mentioned this in her presentation, um, if the information you have submitted, maybe it was wrong information, but it has been used for calculations to estimate the sector's growth factor, uh, or the total emissions from uh, uh, from um, international aviation. Um, although you can correct the information, the totals or the sector's growth factor will not be recalculated, will not be revised in any uh, shape or form. Um, any submit information that you send to ICAO after those calculations have been made will be kept as um, um, you know for information purposes only. The next two options, uh, change Corsia focal point and participation status. It is only to provide information to ICAO. Based on what you send us using the CCR on these two points, ICAO will not take any action to change the Corsia focal point or to change the participation status of a specific state. For this to happen, in addition to providing information to us through the CCR, which is again, it's optional, you don't have to do that. We need to have official communication from the state to ICAO in order to make any kind of changes to either the Corsia focal point or to the participation status of, um, of an ICAO state when the ICAO state volunteers to participate in, in Corsia. So again, these two, we're grateful if you would like to give us a heads up that there's going to be a change in the Corsia focal point or if there's a change in the participation status, but we also need official communication. And I emphasize this, um, you know, very strongly to make sure that it is clear, um, you know, what is the purpose of uh, these two uh, options for service request. The last one is called other is not specified. Uh, this is where you can, if you have a question about the CCR, if it doesn't fall under any of the other service requests, you can send us uh, through the CCR a question or uh, if you need assistance with any other issue and uh, we'll be more than happy to try and help you with whatever the request is. So these are the, the six options that you have in terms of a service uh, request. Um, for each one of them, you can provide, as I mentioned, additional information. And uh, this information can be provided in a box which is called description at the bottom of uh, the form that you will uh, see on your screen when you access a specific uh, service request. And also there is, um, there is a tab that, uh, if you can see here at the top, when you open a service request, uh, which is called notes, and this is where uh, additional information can be provided um, from, the, from the Corsia focal point or also from the IKO super user back uh, to the Corsia focal points if there is need for more um, information. Specifically for the first service request, which is the data upload request, the, um, the Corsia focal points has the option to upload a file that uh, then can be sent to ICAO so information can be, um, uh, can be uploaded into the, into the CCR. But this is only specific for this particular service request, only for the data upload request, not for any of the other options. Um, another feature which is similar to what you saw earlier about the status of the year records, you have an equivalent status of a service request. And the options are slightly different to what um, you saw earlier. So there is a total of five different statuses, uh, it's new, closed, more information needed, ongoing and withdrawn. But the Corsia focal points contains the service request status between new 
uh, and withdrawn. That's the only thing you can change. You don't have access to the other three, which are reserved for the iCare super user. Of course, a closed request is obvious, what means after the request has been resolved um, in one way or another, then the iCare super user will change status to closed, which means it has been resolved and is uh, archived for a uh, future reference. Again, nothing is deleted. Once you create a service request, you cannot delete it. It will be, uh, it can be withdrawn, uh, which is an option as I mentioned that you have. If you don't, if you, um, you know, you submit a, a service request, but then a few moments later you realized, oh, I didn't need to do that. You know, I didn't, I, I, I know how to do it. It was, you know, by mistake, then you can withdraw it, but you cannot delete it. And it will stay in your file, you know, for future reference, um, you know, as uh, withdrawn um, and, uh, but not deleted. The more information status is again reserved for the, um, uh, for the IKEA super user. If the request is not very clear or something is missing from the request, then the IKEA super user can change its status to more information needed. And a follow up email message will go to the Corsia focal point asking for whatever information is needed. And ongoing means that uh, this is already been assigned to a specific uh, person. Uh, within the IKEA Secretariat, and somebody is looking into uh, the specific service request. So, from the perspective of Corsia Focal Point, again, uh, you only have uh, action to two. You have only have access to two statuses for a service request: new or withdrawn. Um, I mentioned before that uh, the IKO super user can change the status uh, from uh, new to more information needed. And uh, this again is, um, uh, is, is done only if there is, if some information is lacking, the IKO super user can understand uh, what the request is about and further information is needed from the course. When disclosed again, uh, the records will be read only. It cannot be deleted. It will be shown um, in your um, in your account as closed, which means that uh, it has been uh, resolved and will be archived for future reference. So this is uh, the end of uh, this presentation, the last presentation we have prepared for you on uh, the service request. And um, again, let's see if there are any uh, questions on uh, this particular topic or, or not. There was a question about how a CFP can add a state user. Um, a CFP can send an email message to the ICAO Secretariat, to the CCR at ICAO.int, providing information with the name of the state user and the email address that we can uh, contact the person and uh, or persons, maybe more than one state user. And then we will add an account uh, for these uh, persons in the CCR. So an email message uh, to ccr at ikeo.int. Um, there was another question about, is there any control for CFP to monitor or control state user? I'm not sure what means about control um, state user, but um, as I mentioned before, the state, the Corsia focal point will be responsible for submitting the name of the state user. You have to make sure that the person you are nominating as a state user is authorized to have access to your state's information. Um, if this person is not authorized, then maybe you should not be nominating um, uh, an individual. And again, this is extremely important who has access to your state's account because of the potential confidential information that may be entered into the uh, CCR. So the people that you nominate, then those people, you know, you have to make sure that they are, um, um, that you know they, they they are authorized to look to to have access to confidential information if you have. Um, oh, 
Okay, it was another question about whether you can have access to the video recording. Yes, we are recording this session. So uh, once we are ready and we have processed it, we will make it available so you can uh, watch it again um, at a later point in time. Um, in relation to when the version one will be released, we don't have a specific date for the release of uh, the version one, but uh, we hope that uh, by early May, uh, it, will be, um, uh, it will be available for all users. But again, you know, more information on this um, as it becomes available. There was another comment about the Fred Plus uh, tool. Um, uh, yes, the Fred Plus tool uh, has you know some useful features. Uh, you're right, but the purpose of uh, the CCR and the Fred Plus tool, the, the purpose of the two tools are completely different, and they are not um, in any way linked. Um, the information that has been collected through Fred Plus has you know, different purposes as compared to the CCR, which facilitates the reporting from states to ICAO. Uh, from what we understand, the Fred Plus tool is one possible tool that can be used uh, to collect information from uh, aeroplane operators. And, uh, but you know, the, the links, the, the information is different at different levels, at different aggregation levels. Um, and um, I think probably you're referring to some of the statistical reports, right? Yes. And some of the graphical options of uh, Fred Plus. Um, the tool that has been used to create the CCR uh, also has some functionalities in relation to presenting information in a graphical way. So you can try to identify any outliers, if you like, in your data information. This has not been activated at this point in time. Uh, we are discussing with our developer and uh, maybe in a future version of the CCR, uh, this is something that we can consider to introduce, uh, but not all of information in the CCR um, lends itself to graphing, uh, to providing information in a nice, uh, you know, chart way. Um, so, you know, one example would be maybe CO2 emissions over time uh, that, you know, could be presented in a graphical format. Uh, but again, this cannot be done right now. We don't have the time series yet. We don't even have any information yet. But in the future, once, once we have more, a more populated database, then that's something we can uh, maybe offer to the users if, again, it is uh, possible and it's useful. Okay, I think we've come to the end of our um, remote session. Um, so, you know, for me, um, I would like to um, thank you again for participating. I hope it was um, uh, very useful for you. I hope you, um, you got a lot out of it. And um, again, any, any questions, don't hesitate. Please send them to us and we'll be more than happy to, uh, to answer them. So once again, thank you very much. Have a good um, afternoon, good evening, and um, we will be in touch again in the future. Thank you.